So let's take a look at unison textures on Ladybird. Now, as we said in our analysis, we have 16 bar form that's played twice to give us 32 bars. We're gonna just focus on the first chorus. Um, and the phrases are broken up into two eight bar phrases that are four by four. And this is not, not the most interesting arrangement, but it will be effective and it'll be more colorful and interesting than having everybody play everything all the time. And so, voila, there you go, right? We have a lot of kind of mini solos for everybody, four bars each, and then everyone plays the last four bars together. So not the most groundbreaking arrangement, but like I said, more interesting and more colorful than everybody playing all the time. If we start to combine instruments, this is when it gets more interesting and more fun. So if I put tenor sax in unison pitch with trumpet on these first four bars, um, it's it's going to be a nice, clean, light sound. Because we said ten, as the saxophones go higher, they... Um, they don't get as powerful as a brass instrument. They're not going to project. So even though this is not, this is getting in the mid high register for, for saxophone, tenor saxophone, it's not going to overpower the trumpet here. So you're, you're going to get a nice clean sound. If I bring the, the tenor sax an octave lower, now I get the best of both worlds. I get the warm fuzzy tenor sax in the bottom because he's more in a mid low register while the trumpet is in the same spot. So we're going to get that brassy sound on top with the warm, you know, read warmth of the uh, tenor sax on the bottom. If I put the trombone an octave below in unison octaves with trumpet, I'm going to get uh, a nice uh, clean like brass sound. Um, both instruments are in comfortable registers. Not, neither one is going to overpower the other one um, because they're both in comfortable ranges in the staff. If I bring the trombone up an octave and go to unison pitch now i have this idea of relative intensity coming into play the trombone is is playing in a much more intense range than the trumpet is um, even though they're sitting on the same note so look at all the ledger lines the trombone has and look where the trumpet is towards the bottom of the staff so you're going to hear more of the trombone than you will of the trumpet in these four bars and that's something you can use to your advantage and of course, you want to make sure that your, your trombone player is capable of playing up in this range before you start, you know, taking advantage of that. Um, so, you know, I could do different instrument combinations and, and get different sounds. Maybe I want to start thin here, you know, um, and have unison pitch for the first, you know, the first eight bars. And this gives me, you know, a nice, like, thin texture. And as I get to the last half of the tune, I'm going to start to bring in more unison octaves to get a more direct sound. And then maybe everybody plays the last four again, like we did before here. So that's an, one option. This is only four bar phrases I'm breaking it up into. We could come back and break this, these, this first four bars into um, smaller chunks. So let's say I have the trumpet play the very first um, two bars and then tenor and trombone join in the third and fourth bar. And I could do the same thing here. So now I go from soloist to group, soloist to group in a shorter amount of time. So it's going to create a different flow to the arrangement. So there's a lot of different combinations you can come up with um, using these, these idea of uh, unison pitch, unison octave, and, and taking advantage of, of your knowledge of, this, of the ranges and its idea of relative intensity. So, you know, I would urge you to go back and listen with this, these things in mind when you listen to big band arrangements or even, you know, small group arrangements. You know, are they playing in unison pitch or unison octave? How is the sound affected? Um, who's playing really high? Who can I hear more of and why? Um, so it'll go, this goes to show you that you can do a lot and create a really interesting arrangement just using unisons. We haven't even gotten into any harmony, but you know, to get a handle on managing these three instruments and their colors and knowing what they're capable of is a great place to start.